Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we'll be discussing about a different topic of biotechnology, which is bioinformatics and computation biology. So this is a very interesting topic and this I would say is my the most favorite topic. So because it involves the use of some of the algorithms, which are very easy to be honest, and some of the stuffs which are like very much common and you would absolutely learn, absolutely be, it's very interesting and uh, it's not at all boring I would say. So moving on with this topic, uh, with, uh, let's just get through the basic information of what it says so that uh, we can get to the roots of it very nicely so that we can understand the topic very nicely and concurrently. So, talking about bioinformatics, it is the research domain focused on linking the behavior of biomolecules, biological pathways, cell organisms and populations to the information encoded in the genomes. Alright, so we'll try to recover some of the uh, uh, molecules that are present in the biomolecules and all of the cells and organisms. Alright, so we'll try to decode all of them. So, moving on with this. So let's go through the historical perspective, so which is a very important thing to understand the histor historical perspective of any topic. So uh, the first one would be the realization of existence of genes in our cells by Hermann Mueller in 1921, for which they won a Nobel Prize. He won a Nobel Prize in 1946. Secondly, uh, understanding of physical natures of gene by works of Frederick Sanger, Erwin Chargaff, and John Kendry in 40s and 50s. Some of the examples were base pairing and structural studies of proteins and more such as the uh, understanding of double helical structure which everyone knows uh, which was of DNA by James Watson and Franz Crick or obviously they won a Nobel Prize for them. It was a massive uh, thing for, for us uh, for whatever we are studying today. And lastly, the sequencing technology, which ultimately led to the sequencing of human genome and many other genomes pioneered by F. Sanger, the Valley Gilbert, and Alan Maxman from 50s to 70s. So this is just a sequence, basic sequence. All right. So moving on, this is a DNA sequence, by the way. So moving on, with the, uh, let's uh, get to some of the more uh, historical perspectives, which is this is one of the most important one. So, the early work on understanding the information encoded in genes relevant to structure, function, and evolution was by Margaret Dayhoff and Russell Dolittle in 70s and 80s. These were through phylogenetic analysis, comparative sequence analysis. So, I'll be explaining all of it in my coming videos. This will contain a series of videos which I'll be explaining the entire thing, what it is all about. And also, there are two most powerful techniques in bioinformatics and modern biology. Alright, so these are phylogenetic analysis and comparative sequence analysis. So through DNA and protein sequence comparison, one can derive the evolution history of organisms. This is a sort of a tree, this is a bacterial tree, this is RK, this is eukarya. So all of the trees are made. So I'll be teaching you everything, how you can make trees and everything related to bioinformatics. So moving on with this, so there are even more and this is the most interesting part. So through DNA and DNA, uh, DNA or protein sequence comparison, one can derive the biological functions of a gene. This is very, this is pretty much common to understand for bioinformatics thing. So all of the sequences which will be present like this. So we will try to decode all of them so that we can understand the roots of an organism or any of the particular thing. Or we can even decode human genome. So we can thus we can derive its basics or roots from there. So there are some of the sequence comparison algorithm. All right. So this is a needle and Wunsch, and this is Smith and Waterman. So both of them, one of them gave global alignment, and one of them gave local alignment. So these two alignments were very important for understanding what it is all about and understanding the local and sequence. Uh, this, Two great people gave us the algorithm through which we can decode all of the sequences and compare each of the sequences and thus we can come to a conclusion that how they were derived or how what were the ancestral genes. And also organizing biological data into databases through gene banks. So gene bank is one of the most important thing to understand. So gene bank of DNA sequences and protein data bank of protein sequences. So this is a very general thing. I'll, I'll be making an entire video for all of the databases for which, for which, uh, for DNA, for protein and many other amino acids and DNA things. 
I'll be making an entire video for all of the databases which comes under which. So just for now, just remember for all your data, uh, DNA sequences are stored in gene bank and all of the protein sequences are stored in protein data bank. All right. So coming to another historical perspective, which is this is even more important. So coming to the genome sequencing project and computation method for gene, uh, computation method for gene finding. So these were given by M. Borodowski, uh, J. Clavery, and E. Uber Badger. All right. So this is some of the historical pieces which might come in your MCQ or even uh, somewhere or the other in the college SEM exams. All right. Uh, also microchips for gene expression profiling were discovered by Pat Brown et al. and Mike Ace et al. Also yeast two uh, hybrid systems were discovered by Chris Fields in 2000s. All right. So these are some of the historical perspectives that are very much relevant to computational biology. So. Another one, we are nowhere going through the historical perspectives. So I made and gathered all of the historical perspectives that were relevant to this. Also, people use mathematical or computational techniques to solve biological processes since 90s. What's new? So it is the amount and the type of biological data generated by high throughput technologies that have driven the rapid advancement of bioinformatics. Definitely. So definitely all of the mathematical techniques and computational techniques uh, were used in pre pretty early, in also in 90s, 1900s. Also, the, the name patent formatics was given due to its uh, uh, time efficiency and also through high throughput technologies. And it was to generate data very quickly in just a fraction of seconds. It has a number of databases related to it through which we, we have to just input the sequence. We can just get it from any PDB, NCBI, or any other database. And we have to just uh, copy and paste that sequence so that we can get all of the understandings and all of the needful uh, informations that are present in a particular genome. So moving on. So there is another biological molecular biology is an information science. So this is basically a, a DNA sequence of a person. All right, so genome sequence encodes an enormous amount of information about an organism. So this is very true. A particular genome has a innumerable amount of information stored in it all right so computational techniques in conjunction with experimental data would help to cover all the hidden information in the genome so these are these led to the formation of the subject called bioinformatics so that we can study everything in one all right so we can get the data of through everything what is stored in this or what even is stored in this four or five sequences all right so let's go through some of the examples of computation for biology. All right. So let's say X years ago to search for which genes are possibly involved in this process. Researchers has to follow uh, the first process would be to remove various part of a DNA sequence, then observe if they may have any relevance or not. So this would be a massive process. Also, human genome has three billion base pairs, so you can understand like how huge is this. And only a very small portion dependence genes. So this is the most important part. All right. So it has three around like it's in more than three billion base pairs, and only a very small portion represents gene. All right. So they have to like remove a small pearl parts of DNA and understand. They have to study that part that if they have any relevance for that part or not. So that is a massive process. All right. That was like very. That was in like 1900s or even before that so why well, so here comes the importance of the subject so why do we choose this so let's say i choose a very like clinical example to show you the importance of this subject so let's say like uh, this guy is uh, like sick or something all right so he has identified a disease or he went to a doctor and he, the doctor said that he's infected with such disease all right so now the first process in bioinformatics would be let's say this is the isolated protein that is infected all right that is due to that for this uh, this guy is sick so the person on the techniques are genomics proteomics and biograph so potentially producing much more targets and personalized uh, personalized targets so that uh, we can understand which of the genes are involved for the particular disease which was not the case previously so there were some of the processes such as genomics proteomics and more of the processes such as biofarm and there are even more processes uh, which are involved in bioinformatics so that will provide in fraction of seconds uh, we can understand which gene is causing the this guy's trouble or which he is sick or something else 
All right, so the second step would be this. So through high throughput screening, a screening up to one lakh compounds a day for activity needs target protein. So that is like pretty massive. All right, also through virtual screening, we can understand using computer to predict activity. So also through to virtual screening, we can understand what sort of activity and what sort of gene is involved in this or that. All right, so next should be combinational chemistry. So rapidly producing vast numbers of compounds. All right, so production of number of compounds are very much uh, essential for a particular disease. All right, and also molecular modeling and in vitro and in silico ATM modules. So computer graphics and models help in, uh, help improve activities. Also, tissue and computer models begin to replace animal testing. So this was a massive, huge invention like in the field of uh, understanding something or something a disease or, or in basically in the formation of drugs against a particular disease. So this is why we are studying computational biology, sir. That is such an important subject in biotechnology. So this, let's go through some of the examples of our computation for biology. So since the inception of Human Genome Project in 1986, computational scientists have developed several programs to isolate genes in a long stretch of DNA sequence. So some of them are G-Rail, Gene Scan, Glimmer, all right. So some of them, this is one of the very important things. So you can just uh, like remember, uh, one two names, one or two names. Also, with gene prediction programs, researchers only needed to knock out regions predicted to be genes in their search for understanding of phosphorus elimination process. So that is like oh, that was that was required for that one. So this is a great saving in time. So you can understand the efficiency of this process all over. So let's just keep this video till here. I just don't want to make this video extremely long, so I'll be making another video for this. So stay tuned for more. Thank you for watching this video.